So Snipe Hunt 2, or Snipe slash slash Hunt, as I was calling it on set, basically came about because I was trying to think of everything I had available to me, what resources I had, and what was the best thing I could do with those, what's the most production value I could get out of those, what's the most compelling story I could come up with those. And so finding locations is hard, but we always have the woods available to us. And so it eventually blossomed into this. And story about a hunter in the woods, he had to be hunting something. I thought, let's dip into our lore. Let's do a little bit of continuity. What if he's hunting the snipe from season one? And I didn't want to do a direct sequel to Snipe Hunt. So it's more of I'm acknowledging that the first one is a work of fiction. And this crazy hunter is obsessed with it and thinks snipes are real. And he's determined to catch one because he doesn't realize that it's not real. And so I wanted to incorporate the first one in here in a way to get exposition to the audience in a creative and interesting way without having to do a lot of retreading. And so by having him watch the first episode on his phone, it gets the exposition to the audience. It also establishes that this is not in the same world as that first one. We're acknowledging that that first one is a work of fiction. So this was actually our most hectic production we've had to film. Uh, it took multiple days. We got the script done, I think, September, end of August, beginning of September. And then we had to have it shot and edited before Halloween because it was a Halloween premiere. And scheduling was a pain because we could only film once it got dark, which was around 8 o'clock. And we're out here in the woods with guns and some are real and some are fake and my lead actor's black, so I don't want to give the cops a reason to come out. So we had to wrap by 10 because that was part curfew. And that created a lot of issues because we only filmed two hours at a time. And Efren's availability and Joaquin's availability didn't always match up. So anytime you don't see them on screen together, they were probably shot on different days. Uh, this shot here, I wanted to establish uh, who the villain is. And we think that Joaquin is the villain and I kind of wanted to pay, play him in an intriguing way where you're not sure is he the good guy is he the baggy he's the first person we see so we're gonna identify with him but he's kind of crazy and I wanted to just establish that he's off of his rocker I also want to do a role reversal from tolerance because in tolerance Efren spent the entire film torturing Joaquin and so I wanted Joaquin to be able to get his comeuppance and I thought this was a great role reversal for him here. This whole line about Thorazine. I used all my Thorazine to put you under. Oh, you just carry Thorazine on you. That was actually originally written for an episode of Black Suits as a very obscure Ghostbusters joke. Uh, because in Ghostbusters, Peter Vankman just brings Thorazine on his date with Dana Barrett. And if you really stop to think about it, you're like, wait a minute, why, why did he bring that on his date? And they never really address it in the movie. It's a passing line. And so here I wanted to just kind of like wink, wink, nudge, nudge to that. You just carry Thorazine on you. It's surprisingly useful. Uh, in fact, when we premiered this um, at the, the Bridge Storage and Art Space, uh, our production assistant, Angela, who's actually a vet, was just like, there's really just a conversation about Thorazine in here. Uh, that shot with the bottle breaking didn't turn out quite like I wanted. I threw the bottle, but I missed my mark and we only had two bottles, so we didn't have enough to redo it. So I just had to kind of live with it. It's a visual effect. Uh, the bottle breaking and Efren sitting there are two different shots that were composited together. Uh, cause I didn't want to actually throw a bottle at Efren's head. There was a lot of props that were needed for this story. The spring trap and the rifle and all this stuff, that news, that rope is left over from uh, Never Conquered Rarely came. So there was a lot of props we had to get for this. We had to put together all kinds of costumes and operative costumes. So it's probably our most expensive short we've ever done, primarily because the rifle we were using is the same one we used in uh, One Bad Day. And it actually got stolen out of the back of my car after a day of filming. So we had to buy a new rifle. So that right there was 400 bucks out of the budget. Originally, I wanted to shoot the fight scene on the very last day of filming. I wanted to save that for the end so we could just devote an entire day to choreographing this and staging it and filming it and getting coverage of it. And I wanted to film it last so that that way if anybody got hurt, it didn't screw up the production. 
Unfortunately, uh, because of Efren's availability, we weren't able to do that. We had to film a lot of stuff on the last day. And so we had to rush and shoot this entire fight scene in about 15 minutes. And it had to line up with this shot, which we had already shot a couple weeks prior and the stuff before it. So uh, I'm not happy with it. For me, it's the weakest part of the film is the fight scene. It comes off kind of hokey and stupid. And I really wanted it to be like violent and brutal and visceral. And I wasn't able to get that, unfortunately. So uh, next time I will make sure I plan accordingly when I'm trying to squeeze way too much into a production day. So since the rifle we were using on the first day got stolen, most of the shots for the rest of here, if you look, that rifle doesn't match the one that was in the opening shot. I tried to shoot everything in a way where it's not super noticeable because uh, we just had to make do. We had a hard deadline of October 31st and then we had signed a deal with the bread storage and art space to premiere it at their facilities about a week before Halloween's. And when we signed that deal, uh, we hadn't even finished shooting yet. So I had to finish shooting this and edit it in time for the premiere. So bit of a time crunch this is probably the most, uh, most of a time crunch we've had in any of these. Usually we have a, a more leeway than this, but this was a very last minute thing when me and Chad were discussing what we wanted to do for the Halloween special this year, I had asked him, well, do you want to use one of the ones we have already done for the season? Like never conquered rarely came or a wager. And he was like, no, let's save those for the season. And we tossed ideas around and I had been developing this story and he was like, you should just do snipe hunt. So with that, we had to kind of scramble and get it done because of how limited we were shooting. We could only film two hours at a time and everybody's availability was screwy, I, and I'm running sound, and I'm the DP, and I'm the first AC, and I'm the director, and I'm the script supervisor. Uh, a lot of stuff kind of got overlooked. Uh, I wasn't able to really direct Efren as well as I would have liked. Uh, he kind of stopped selling his leg after a while, and I wish I would have just noticed that and drilled him to him a bit more. With these operatives, these are all played by Chad. I only had enough money for one operative costume. So anytime you see more than one operative on screen, it's a visual effect. Um, I did the voice for the operative, but every time I would do a different camera angle, I would just move Chad into the background to try and make it look like they're surrounded. If you think about it, there's at least two operatives behind him. So when they see him reaching for the gun, they should be immediately trying to take him out. But uh, don't think about that. Don't think about that. That was another thing where I really wanted F or I really wanted Joaquin to just kick Efren's leg out and get him in a really tight headlock and really choke him out and have Efren fight for air. And we weren't able to do it. We had gotten four or five takes done, and I still wasn't happy with it, but we were running out of time, so I had to just settle for it. And it looks it looks kind of hokey like the fight scene. And I just I just wish I had more time to really work with them and choreograph stuff and get everything done and up to the snuff that I was hoping for. But sometimes you have to just settle. This scene here is probably my favorite scene. It was shot on two different days. Um, Efren's side was shot on a completely different day as Joaquin's. Um, we actually shot this with two different guns. We shot this scene twice. We weren't sure which gun Efren was going to end up with, whether it was going to be the revolver or the other one. Um, so we shot it with both as a safety, but we ended up liking the revolver more. There's one line Efren has where I had to do some editing magic to really get the performance I wanted. His physical performance was better in one take, but his delivery was better in another take. And so I took the audio from one take and overlaid it with the video from another take. And it works. If you know what to look for, it doesn't quite match up with his lips, but it goes by so quick you'd probably never notice. But I just I love Joaquin's performance here where he's just dicking with Efren the whole time. And he's revealing that he knows what's going on and he just wants Efren to fess up. And I love some of the lines I wrote in here. I wrote them as a Southerner. That way I could get away with some lines, you know, like I used to tend cattle when I was younger. So I reached my lifetime bullshit quota a long time ago. Thought that was a cute line. And this right here is where we realize that, oh, Efren, Efren's wallpaper is Alain Vital. That's the same name as those operatives we're working for. Efren's working for the same company as those operatives. Hey, wait a minute. He's, he's into this. And so 
in my head, I'm trying to justify what the twist is. The twist went through a bunch of different revisions throughout the script writing process. Um, and eventually we settled on this. And in my head, basically what happens is Alon Vital is almost like a Cadmus organization. And they're experimenting on a creature. Maybe it's a snipe. Maybe it's a different creature that Joaquin just happens to think is a snipe. And it escapes and Efren decides to go after it. Because in my head, Efren's like a Lex Luthor CEO, high up type person. Maybe he's been visiting with it every day and they're going to send their operatives in. And he's like, no, 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 this thing is too valuable. Let me let me go in and after it. and I'll find it. I'll bring it back. If you don't hear from me in an hour, send your team in, you know. And then he, of course, falls into one of Johnson's traps here. And when they don't hear from him, they send the team in after him. So in my head, that's kind of what's happening here. I may tell that side of the story in another short film or something. Uh, me and Joaquin really like the idea of Alain Vital, and we want to do more with it. So you'll probably be seeing Alain Vital in more stuff here. Um, but yeah, this was a pain in the ass to film. There was scheduling issues. Uh, one day after filming, like I said, the rifle got stolen. Um, another day after filming, we saw a skunk. And we're just like, nobody fucking move. Nobody fucking move. And this was this skunk leaves. We're like, get the shit. We're done. We're done. Pack that shit up. We're done. Uh, neighborhood watch lady kept checking on us and interrupting shoots on different days. Uh, there was all the scheduling issues. The stuff at the abandoned building and the fight scene was all filmed on one day. And we had to hike for about an hour to get to the abandoned building and film all that stuff. And then we got lost on our way out because it's midnight and it's pitch black in the middle of nowhere. And somehow we got turned around. So... I think I finished this edit about two days before it premiered. And so by the time we're at the theater premiering this, I was the only one who had seen it. So it was the first time anybody else was getting a chance to see it. So kind of stressful from beginning to end. This was probably the most stressful thing uh, we've ever filmed. But for the most part, I'm happy with it. I wish the action stuff was handled a little better. I wish I had more time to devote to Efren's performance um, with Joaquin He's just more experienced than Efren, and we've worked together so much where it was easier for me to get the performance I wanted out of him. With Efren, I just don't work with him in that capacity that often, and I just needed to spend more time with him to get the performance I wanted. And unfortunately, I just I didn't have that time. So if I have one regret, it's I wish I just had more time. Time is a predator that stalks us all our lives. Sure, you can outrun it with medicine and doctors, but eventually time's going to catch up to you and make the kill.